What is up guys? 70 Savage here, coming at you today with the most exciting video I've ever made on this YouTube channel. Today we are going to finally be doing the van tour. So if you have not tuned into the channel before, I'm 70 Savage, I'm a software engineer by trade, and I've spent the last four or five years converting these Sprinter vans from nothing but a bare metal shell into a tiny home that you can take off-road. This right here is my latest creation. I spent about two years from start to finish converting this particular van, and I have to say with confidence that this is the coolest thing I have ever built. When I first started this YouTube channel five years ago, I knew absolutely nothing about how to build stuff in the real world. And through a combination of watching other people's YouTube channels and just trying things out on my own, I've learned everything that I know today. And over the last two years, as I've been building this thing, I've been uploading detailed videos on every single project. So if you see something on this van tour that particularly interests you, there's a good chance that I have an entire detailed video on how I actually built it. I am super, super excited to share this with you guys. Let's go ahead and dive right in. So first things first, let me give you guys an overview of the exterior of the van and all of the off-road aftermarket parts that I fit on it. So the goal with this van build and something that has a lot to do with the parts on the exterior of the van is I wanted to be able to do light overlanding and get to places exactly like this where you would never be able to get to in a normal RV. Now, obviously this vehicle does have some off-road limitations. It is a massive vehicle to begin with. It's a four x four Sprinter 170 inch wheelbase, which is kind of the mid size version of these Sprinter vans. It's about 23 feet long in total. So much, much bigger than your traditional short wheelbase off-road vehicle. But for how big this thing is and for how luxurious it is on the inside, it's incredible to be able to do the kind of off-roading that you can. On the back of the van, we have some rear accessories. These are both from Al Vans, the extra spare tire and ladder to get on top of the roof. And then the Sherpa, which is just basically a sheet of aluminum with bolt holes in it. I currently have two bike racks mounted to it. And besides being functional, they definitely give it that off-road aesthetic from the back that I actually really like. I might end up putting like a storage box on this Sherpa rack on the right-hand side instead of the two bike racks because admittedly, I have not really been doing that much mountain biking recently. Let's go ahead and climb up the ladder here, which is pretty easy to do even when you're one-handed. The main attraction on the top of our roof deck here is that we actually have a walkable solar roof deck. What I mean when I say walkable solar roof deck is that you can literally just walk all over these solar panels. You can put your chairs up here and sit on top of them. They are built to have stuff on top of them. There's something so cool about just chilling up here on the top of your van. Other things that we have on the roof of the van are our dual max air fans so that we can get a nice circular airflow through the van. I have my cell signal booster antenna, which easily flips up whenever I decide I wanna use that. And then I have my Starlink mounting pole. If you are not familiar, Starlink is actually a version of satellite internet that was invented by Elon Musk. What that means is that you can have full high-speed internet access in places like this, even if there's zero cell service. All you need is literally access to the sky. Moving on to the side of the van here, I have a couple of side steps that are also built by Rome Built. I think they look pretty dang cool. And it just makes it a lot easier to kind of get in and out of the van. And then I do have an awning on this side of the van that extends out about eight or nine feet. Makes for a really nice living space out here. Moving on to the front of the van here, you can see that we have a pretty hardcore off-road looking vehicle. I have the CA tuned bumper with a 12,000 pound remote controlled winch that I can use while I'm driving the vehicle, even if I'm by myself, which is pretty cool. And then these lights that you're seeing are all made by Baja Designs. When you turn these lights on at night, it is ridiculous how bright they actually are. It almost feels like you're in some sort of football stadium or something. And then lastly, the most important thing on the exterior of the vehicle that actually drastically improves the off-road capability of this thing are the wheels, tires, and the suspension. The wheels are Black Rhino Arsenals. The tires are BFG KO2s. 
They're 275, 70, 17s. They're the biggest tires that you can put onto a Sprinter van before you start losing the cool, convenient highway technology. And then on top of the wheels and tires, we have this ridiculous suspension package that I just added to the van about a month ago. We did a combination of the Van Compass 4.3 kit and the Agile Rip kit. So we have an inch and a half of total suspension lift, but we also have those super cool adjustable shocks that let you dial it to super squishy for off-road or super firm for highway driving. Between that lift and having the soft suspension mode, it has drastically improved the off-road capability of this vehicle. Some of the stuff that I did on this trip in order to find this particular camping spot, I would have never been able to do with stock suspension. That covers it for the exterior. And overall, I'm super, super happy and absolutely recommend all of the exterior modifications on this vehicle. Let's go ahead and go on to the interior so that I can show you guys what's pretty much consumed the last two years of my free time. So the idea of this particular van build was something that I dreamed up when I first started getting into vans. It's probably also a vision that a lot of y'all share when you're watching these van videos. And it's the idea of having a van that you can take wherever you want and have as close to the same experience as living in a modern day home. So that's basically the foundation of all of the different features and functionality that I added in here. So very first thing about the interior of this van build that I'm personally really proud of, every single component in this entire van build was framed out of 80-20 aluminum beams. Overall, I wanted this build to be as strong and as lightweight as I could possibly make it. And then another huge, huge advantage to using 8020 is that when you've bolted things to that frame you can simply unbolt them whenever you need to go back inside that cabinet to do work but hopefully now it makes sense why you see those little white bolts on all of the cabinetry throughout the van it's because all of that plywood skin is bolted directly to those aluminum beams okay so enough with the boring construction of the van Let's talk a little bit about the van build itself, all the features and functionality, what the layout looks like, and how it's actually like when you're living in this thing. Overall, the build is separated into two different spaces. There is a living space and there's a sleeping space. Let's go ahead and start out with the living space. So the living area serves a few different purposes. It has three seats, including the front two sprinter seats that can be swiveled around so you can kind of just hang out in this area. The factory seats that come in these Sprinter vans are actually really comfortable and they feel great to sit in for long periods of time. But my favorite seat in this van is actually the third seat, the one that I added. I did a ton of research when I was building this seat on the proper angles for the most ergonomic seating positions. And I think I absolutely nailed it because I can sit and work in this third seat and it is just a wonderful experience. Plus, I kind of like the view when I'm making videos. You can kind of see the van, see a little bit of the place that I'm staying at. I just think it's nice. The bench seat does have a seatbelt installed on it, which in my opinion is better than having no seatbelt at all. I did try and bolt it to multiple parts of the frame and I think it's fairly safe, but a lot of people disagree and uh, they made sure to share those opinions when I made the video on how I actually made the seatbelt. Above the bench seat is where the brains of the van live. This is the control panel for everything that you need to interact with in this van build, but hides them away in a nice little compartment so that you don't have to think about them until you actually need to use them. It has the battery monitor, which shows you how much percentage battery you have left. The water level gauge, so you can see how much water is left in your fresh water tanks. It has a bunch of on off rocker switches for all the different little features in this van. Next feature we have in the living area of the van is this kitchen galley unit. The countertop here is made out of a maple butcher block that I straight up got from Home Depot. I did spend a bunch of time hollowing out the underside to try and make it a bit lighter. And then I coated it with a bunch of coats of water-based polyurethane. Both the paper towel dispenser and the soap holder are both stuck down with like industrial grade Velcro. So they don't move anywhere, even during crazy off-roading. I think it just adds a nice homey touch and a level of convenience to use in this van. And to be honest, I don't do much cooking in the van. I'm mostly the kind of guy who does like microwaved frozen meals. That being said, we do have that massive battery bank in here and I have a 120 volt outlet right here on the galley unit. So I have plugged in an induction cooktop and cooked up ramen. So the galley unit itself has a pretty good amount of counter space, but for when I need extra cooking space, 
I'll utilize that swiveling lagoon table that I normally use for my laptop, which either extends the counter space for the galley unit or acts as a little desk for the passenger seat. If I were living in here with two people, I'd probably just get a second lagoon table and leave them both mounted to both locations. And then I had this really good size fridge and freezer combo that kind of matches the aesthetic of the van and it runs directly off the 12 volt battery bank. The fridge section holds tons and tons of drinks and you can put lots of food in here as well probably enough to live up to two-ish weeks off the grid. For me, I can put up to like eight meals in the freezer section and that lasts me a few days. Next to the fridge, I've designed something in this van that I don't think a lot of people think about until they actually start living in their van build and that is a trash can. If you're living and cooking in your van, you're gonna generate a lot more trash than you probably think. Trash is smelly. It's even more smelly in a hot, enclosed small space. So this pullout drawer with the built-in trash can lid flap kind of provides two barriers from that smell getting into the living area. And since I do do most of my cooking in a microwave, I did install a microwave in this build. It actually works pretty well for a small microwave. I've used some pretty crappy small microwaves in the past and this one tends to heat the food up pretty evenly. The ceiling that I made in this van is these quarter inch planks that you can literally buy at Home Depot. Then I just coated them with a few coats of water-based polyurethane. Throughout the ceiling, I used a ton of these little LED puck lights. Reason I use so many is because sometimes it's nice to have a ton of light in here. And at the end of the day, they're all dimmable. Then really briefly, the floor is a material called Lawn Seal. It's like this dedicated aircraft and marine vinyl. It is incredible incredibly hard to install this lawn steel stuff without having like bubbles in your floor. I ended up needing help from a professional in order to get it right. And to be honest, like the floor still scratches really easily, which is something that really frustrates me. Besides that though, I do think that it looks pretty nice, but the floor and the ceiling are super, super thin so that I can stand up as straight as possible in this van. I'm 6'5", which makes me a very inconvenient shape for van life. I can stand up fully straight underneath the Max Air fan. The other big thing that I've distributed throughout the living space is storage. We've got a couple of big storage drawers underneath the bench seat. Behind the bench seat, I put two pantry drawers, which I'll typically put all of my snacks into. I'll also put all of my paper plates and plastic utensils in here, which was originally out of laziness, but it turns out that using disposable eating stuff is actually a lot better when you're in a van because you don't have to waste the water on doing the dishes. On the galley unit, I have some storage as well. On the side of the galley unit, there was a little bit of wasted space that I decided to use for these two drawers. The galley unit also has a skinny storage drawer, which I have the induction cooktop in, as well as just miscellaneous utility items. Moving over to the tall cabinet, I have some cool storage in here. One of them being a full on hanging closet, which is very much a nice to have in the van. There's something really nice about going on van trips and just not needing to bring a suitcase. So for all the drawers and cabinets in this van, I decided to use these latches made by a company called RV Labs. I think they're the most aesthetically pleasing latches that exist for vans and campers and stuff. As far as functionality, they work pretty well. You do have to think about the fact that the handles stick out and they're kind of sharp. So you're going to catch on them as you're walking through the van. If I were to build another van, I'd probably still consider using them, but uh, I don't know. It's a tough call. They're great for YouTube though, because they look dope. All of the drawers are also undermount bloom drawers, which are the like fancy version that you would have in a nice house. They're made out of this beautifully finished lightweight maple plywood and they're all edge banded. So I think that these drawers just turned out great. One important thing that you might realize about this van is that I have zero overhead storage. Not putting upper storage in this van is something I decided on after losing approximately 20% of my brain cells on cracking my head against the upper cabinets that I put in my previous van build. And now that it's done, I love that decision because it just feels so much more open in here. I'm not constantly thinking or anxious about smacking my head on things. And even though I lose storage space by not having those upper cabinets, I have a secret storage trick up my sleeve that I'll talk about in a second.
Next up in our living area is something that I really enjoy in this van, and it is a dedicated bathroom. Now, this is actually a pretty big bathroom as far as van bathrooms go. It's 24 inches wide and 36 inches long, and it is actually a wet bath. So what that means is both the toilet and the shower are in the same space. Now that I have this dedicated wet bath with a dedicated bathroom, I can confidently say I think this is the way to go in your van build, especially when you're staying in here with other people and you have to like take a deuce in the morning. Having the toilet in its own enclosed space is just a way more house-like experience. So speaking of the toilet, believe it or not, my most popular video on my entire YouTube channel throughout the duration of this build was the toilet video. So thanks to you guys for watching that video so many times. I'm now a certified toilet YouTuber. Anyways, toilets in a van are a really important topic. There's a few different toilets that you can pick from. I've made two videos that go into great detail on the different types of toilets that you can put in your van. And I actually recommend specific toilets in those videos. So I'm not gonna go into too many details now. This toilet here is the separate tiny toilet. It's a waterless urine diverting toilet, which means it has a solids container with this little flap on top of it that opens when you sit down on the toilet seat. And then it has a liquids container in the front. I end up needing to empty the liquids container once every couple of days. And then the solids container, I only have to empty once every couple of weeks. One of the coolest parts about this toilet though, is that it has a built-in vent fan. So it's constantly just sucking the air from the inside of the toilet and pushing it outside of the van. And the toilet never smells whether I'm inside the van or out. Plus, I just think that this toilet looks sexy, especially compared to the other van toilets on the market. Other than that, I have this custom teak shower mat in here, which I just think makes the aesthetic of the bathroom look super nice. Your van's rarely level, which means that water in the shower pan is gonna pool up in one of the corners. So this teak shower pan kind of makes it tall enough where you're not stepping in water, even if you're not parked on a level location. And then as far as the shower in here, it works very similar to a normal shower in your home. It's just a lot smaller. It has this little mixing valve here that you can turn to all the way hot or all the way cold or however hot you want it. Yes, I do have an electric water heater in here to take hot showers. It's nowhere near as nice or as comfortable as a shower in your home. Like if I'm staying at a friend's house, I'll typically just go into their house to take a shower. But when you're way off the grid, this can just make a huge difference in kind of the quality of your camping experience. Okay, so that covers it for everything in the living area. Now let's go back to the south wing and talk a little bit about the sleeping area. So when I first started designing this van and at the time that I uploaded my first video, this was actually the biggest bed in a van anywhere on the internet that I could possibly find. It is 75 inches on the boy side, which is the longer side, and then it is 72 inches on the girl side. And when it's in its low position like this, it actually has an additional six inches of length. So with me being 6'5", I can even sleep face down with my little toes pointed out. Not only that, but it is a nine inch custom made memory foam mattress that I got from this company called Tachta. I actually think that this mattress is more comfortable than the mattress in my home. It was also about twice as expensive. But the coolest thing about this bed is not necessarily how comfortable it is, but the fact that it is indeed a rising bed system. Now, this is something else that I crafted up when I originally envisioned this van build. The original reason that I wanted a rising bed system was so that when I go on mountain bike trips, I can simply lift the bed six inches or so and then have space underneath the bed to fit the mountain bikes. Yes, you can sleep in this bed in any position, no matter how high or low it is. And then when I'm not on a mountain biking trip, I can just put the bed in its lowest position and sleep very comfortably. It's surprising how little headroom and how high off the ground the bed is when you do make it high enough to fit bikes underneath it. A lot of people just don't realize that when they're building vans. One nice feature I do have for the bed, since it does indeed rise up, is this little wada. In reality though, I have yet to go on a single dedicated mountain biking trip. That being said, it makes it incredibly easy to store a ton of crap underneath the bed and then simply rise the bed up when you need to access that crap. A couple weeks ago, I went to Montana and spent about 10 days there and I found myself lifting the bed up every single day to access something that I wanted from the back. And as I was talking about before, this storage solution is the game changer that allows me to not need any upper cabinetry in the van since there's just such a massive volume of accessible storage space underneath the bed. 
Next up, I wanna talk about temperature in the van. Now, in my mind, the temperature and comfortability in the van includes three separate topics. One of them is just airflow in the van. Second one is air conditioning. And then the third one is heating. It's way more important to have well-designed airflow in a van than it is in like a house because there's just not as much air in a van. It gets stuffy very quickly in here. So I do have the dual max air fans on the roof so that I can circulate air throughout the whole vehicle and that actually works pretty well but believe it or not that's actually not typically what i'm doing what i typically do for airflow in the van is set the windows in the cracked position and then turn the fans to suck air outward and what that results in is a almost unnoticeable amount of actual airflow but it's just enough so that it doesn't feel stuffy and speaking of windows the windows that i put in this van build are actually incredibly cool in the living area as well as in the sleeping area i've added these arctic turn windows not only do they give it that cool kind of overlandy look from the outside but they actually work really well how they work is you open the four latches on the window and then you can push it out to one of three positions depending on how open you want that particular window and then the coolest part about these windows is they come with a built-in blackout shade as well as a built-in bug screen so you can slide the shade out connect it to the bug screen and then slide both of those up and down it's way way more convenient than buying those like handmade insulated window covers which i do have for the front windows but for anything in the living and sleeping space, all I have to do is slide these things up and down. These windows are constructed of dual pane acrylic and not glass like the normal windows in your car. So they have way better insulation value. So next up we have the highly debated van life topic, air conditioning. When I started my first van build about five years ago now, all of the content and material that I was reading online basically convinced me that I would not be able to have a off-grid battery powered air conditioner that was actually reasonable to use. Between the solar on the roof, the alternator charger that I've built into the vehicle, and then the massive battery bank that I have in the back, I can just keep the air conditioner running perpetually. If you've ever sat in a car on a hot day and just not had the air conditioning on, that's how it gets in your van. Even though it's well insulated in here, it's still a vehicle at the end of the day and uh, it's very uncomfortable even on moderately hot days in like the 80s. With the battery powered air conditioner, that is no longer the case. I've had days where I've been in this chair on meetings for like eight or 10 hours and because of that air conditioner, it's actually not that bad. And you might've noticed earlier in the video that I have no air conditioner unit on the roof of the van. This air conditioner is made by a company called Cruise and Comfort and it's actually an undermount air conditioner. So the condenser is underneath the van, the compressor is in the bottom of that tall cabinet, and then the evaporator, the thing that actually blows the air outwards, is in the top of the tall cabinet. I just loved the idea of not having one of those big, ugly air conditioners on the roof of the van. That being said, I do not want to create something that was in my head when I got into this idea of battery-powered off-grid air conditioners in a vehicle. When you're in a big metal can with things like glass windows, the outside of the van can often get to like 140, 150 degrees on a really hot day. And that heat just constantly seeps to the inside of the van. So the air conditioner has to work really hard to keep the inside of the van cool. And although it makes a massive night and day difference on the livability in here, it is not nearly as effective as like an air conditioner in your house. It basically takes a significant edge off of whatever heat you're currently in. Anyways, there's an entire video on the air conditioner and how I actually installed it if you're interested in more details. So that covers it for air conditioning. Let's talk about the diesel heater that I have installed for the opposite conditions. And unlike the air conditioner, the diesel heater does not have any caveats for how well it works. I have been camping in the middle of Utah in a seven degree snowstorm and it was a warm 72 degrees in my van it had no trouble keeping up whatsoever i use an s-bar heater which is very similar to the wabasto heaters and it literally runs directly off the diesel tank that powers your vehicle only difference being that it uses a small fraction of the amount of diesel that your car does those little diesel heaters are just one of those technologies that just works incredibly incredibly well in a van build. You have to get a diesel heater if you're building a van. And then another really important aspect of heating and cooling is the direction that you have your vents. In my case, I have vents facing both forwards into the living area and backwards into the sleeping area. So whenever I turn on the heat or AC, it's cooling down the whole van equally. I do think that heating, air conditioning, and good airflow 
are all mandatory if you want to be comfortable and spend significant amounts of time inside of your van. You could have the best insulated van in the world, and unless you have forced heating and air conditioning, it's not gonna be a comfortable temperature inside of it. So the final topic that I wanna talk about in this van tour are the utilities in this van build. What I mean by utilities are just the electrical and the water system. In vans, unlike in most boats and RVs, you have massive water systems for fresh water and you have a massive electrical system that it basically allows you to not be tied to the infrastructure like the electrical grid or have water hookups. They're the thing that allows you to travel around and experience the outdoors. So I took that topic to the absolute extreme with this particular van build. The battery bank that I have for my battery system is over 12,000 watt hours of battery power. In different terms, it's over a thousand amp hours of 12 volt batteries. And the reason that I went so massive on this battery system is the idea of just not having to think about how much battery I have left at any given time. And because of how massive the battery bank is, the electrical system had to be completely 100% custom. So I had to do all of my own distribution, breakers, fuses, all of that stuff I actually had to think and know about what I was doing. Most of the electrical components are in the utility cabinet on the passenger side underneath the bed, but I also have an entire electrical sub panel that's behind the bench seat back. The nice thing is I'm not only super stoked with how big this battery bank, but I'm also very comfortable with how safe this electrical system is. Every single wire is behind multiple fuses or breakers and I sized up heavily on all of the wire sizing. So there's almost no risk of this thing catching on fire. I also have a 3000 watt inverter that I have paired up with the battery bank. And what that allows me to do is have those house outlets that you see throughout the van so that you can just plug in house peripherals. Those things don't run off of direct battery power. You have to have an inverter to power those things. And 3000 watts means I can use like the induction cooktop and the microwave and have my gaming laptop plugged in all at the same time without thinking about it. Overall, this electrical system is kind of at the heart of why this van accomplished my original van life vision of having as close to house-like comforts being in the middle of nowhere off the grid. Aside from the electrical system, we have a water system. I have an over wheel well fresh water tank that contains about 32 gallons of fresh water. And then the water heater holds six gallons of fresh water as well. They're all hooked up to an electric water pump that provides, I think five and a half gallons per minute. It basically feels like the same amount of pressure as a house. There's a couple of really nifty things about this water system that I wanna talk about. First one is the water lines actually go underneath the van, which means that in winter conditions, they freeze by default. So what I've actually installed is heat tape along all of the plumbing. Anything that holds water that's outside of the van has 12 volt heat tape on it. And what heat tape does is it's simply a switch that I flip and it warms up. <laughs> what I'm planning on doing is kind of just letting the lines freeze. And then whenever I need to use the van or use the water system, I'll just flip on that heat tape and it'll defrost them. And it's actually totally okay to just allow all of the pipes and fittings in this van to freeze because I chose to build them out of Upener or Propex pipe and fitting systems, all of which can withstand the PSI associated with pipes freezing. If I were to do this build over again, that is one thing that I would change though. I'd basically create an elevated space underneath the bed and then run all of my electrical and then also water lines inside the van. And another caveat of living in a van instead of living in a house is that any of the water you use you also have to store somewhere. This is what we call gray water. It's basically a mixture of fresh water and whatever came off your hands when you were washing your hands or the toothpaste that you're putting down the drain. I have a 20 gallon gray water tank that's stored in the back of the van underneath. And that's where all of the gray water collects as you're using the van. I'm either way off the grid or I'll just find some dirt on the side of the road somewhere. I'll drive onto it and then flip the drain valve. And that makes it really easy from inside the van to flip a switch, wait a minute or two for that gray water tank to drain, close it back up and drive off. And that pretty much covers it for water and electrical systems. And now that I think about it, that actually covers it for everything that exists in this van build. 
I know that you guys are all interested, so I want to do a quick cost breakdown. I'm gonna put this spreadsheet up on the screen here. It breaks down all the different projects that I did, how much money I spent on each one of them, and then how many hours I spent on each one. As far as how many hours that I put into this and what my hourly rate would be, well, I feel like I'm good enough at this van building stuff now where I would be able to charge professional rates if I were to build vans for other people, which I'm not gonna do by the way, but just for the sake of calculating how much this van's worth. And then if I multiply the amount of hours that I put into this with how much professionals are charging to build vans right now, this van in total is worth about $300,000, which blows my mind. I would never be able to afford purchasing a vehicle like this if it wasn't for you guys watching my YouTube channel. So I really do have you guys to thank for this van existing at all. And that probably sounds really crazy to you guys, especially those of you who are not like in this van industry, but that's what these kind of vans are selling for. And by the way, you can build way cheaper vans with way fewer hours. A lot of the time that I spent was on the detailed fit and finish of this van and the time spent engineering the best possible solutions. Like I really aimed for perfection in this van build. Next question is whether or not I'm going to sell this van. And I think that's a bit of a loaded question because any vehicle kind of just gets sold from person to person until it ends up in a junkyard. That being said, I am not gonna be selling this van anytime soon. As I mentioned a couple of times, this is the van that I wanted when I first thought about getting into van life. And I absolutely love the trips that I've had in it so far. I have a lot more trips planned. I will sell it eventually if I get my hands into another crazy big project or uh, if I can somehow magically afford an earth roamer. But besides that, I do plan on keeping this thing for a while. So if you are interested in seeing me travel around in this van, slap the subscribe button below. I do promise to make at least a few travel videos. Which brings me to the final question of what is my next project? And uh, I had to think about how I was gonna answer this one. I wanna be as honest as possible with you guys. I'm at a stage in my life where it doesn't make sense to do YouTube full time. I mentioned to you guys that I'm a software engineer and I currently run a small tech business that uh, aligns a lot better with what my goals and dreams in life are. And believe it or not, running that business takes quite a bit of cognitive bandwidth as well as just my time. And as cheesy as it sounds, I feel like I'm on this earth because there's something that I need to build. I just don't know exactly what that is yet. So as of right now, my plan is to continue to heavily invest in that side of my goals and dreams and intertwine videos as fit. And filming a travel video takes away 90% of the fun of actually experiencing that travel in exchange for a YouTube video. So I'm gonna try and find a good balance there. I do promise that I will upload some travel videos though. And if I can accomplish my goals in the tech industry, I do have this crazy vision of creating a super high-end electric overlanding vehicle company one day. Anyways, at this point I'm rambling. I hope that I've answered all your guys' questions. Hope that you enjoyed the van. I wanna give one more shout out to you guys, my fan base for watching these videos, for allowing all of this to have been created. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you guys next time.